and I think it's okay now. Um, okay, that's fine. Let me share the screen. Screen. <clears throat> can you all can you all see my screen now? Can can you? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, basically, uh, my name is Greg Iwanu and uh, I'm the head of arts in uh, MPW London. And what we're going to do, I'll try in the next 20 minutes, something like that, 25 minutes probably, to introduce to you what what you know what the art department is in MPW London, what subjects we are offering, what what students we're looking for, and what what subject students ideally will get if they want to go, for example, for fashion courses or architecture or fine art, and and generally to introduce, I, I will I will let you know some uh, some um, facts like um, results we got, the la the current results we got, the university offers, and um, please feel free to um, stop and ask any questions, or if you want, you can uh, you can ask me um, in the end. It's up to you. Okay. Um, if something is not clear, again, uh, please let me know. So. Um, as probably some of you, you know, we're offering five subjects in the department. The most popular one is art and design, which is, you know, is the one that uh, most of the students are more familiar. And I will come back to that a little bit later. The second subject is textiles. The third one is 3D design, ceramics. As you understand, we, we now call it all the examples, all universities, they call it 3D design, not ceramics. Ceramics, it was the previous name that um, they call it um, the reason that they change it to 3D design is because students are not expected um, um, to do only ceramics like clay or plaster. They can use any other 3D material basically to create 3D work. They can use wood if they want. They can use um, um, uh, foam board or plaster or, or any, any silver, any material they like. Um, the next one is graphic design or graphic communication. Some some people they call it graphic communication. Um, and photography is another popular popular subject that students um, uh, choose. So those five subjects basically. Now art and design, as I said before, is the is a kind of most popular one because students are usually do take GCC art and design and then they come and they continue with A-levels. So it's, it, they're quite familiar, they're used to this um, course, so they continue in A-level. So in MPW, you, we offer it as uh, A-level and GCSE course. Um, we have three art tutors and two extra 3D tutors. So basically, um, if the, let's talk about two years A-level. In the first year, they have three hours uh, art and two hours 3D. So these students that are trained in the first year especially, we train them how to use as many techniques, as many materials as possible. Because as you understand, if you want an A star, and obviously we're aiming for those, um, you need to use as many techniques and you need to show as many skills as possible. Of course, that is good for their portfolio on the second year as well. You can't just show portfolio, we will, which we will talk a little bit later about portfolio in more details. You can't just show uh, only drawings, for example. Even if your drawings are, are amazing, like like really detailed, like this drawing here, you can't just show only one skill. That's 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 not what they want. So in the second year, they have six hours, four hours drawing and painting, and two hours printmaking, 3D clay, plaster, cardboard, blah, blah, blah. They have as many techniques as possible. Um, something that obviously um, the students need to remember is that it's not just practical. We have the sketchbook, the practical things like developing skills, but we have some research. It's not too much, but it's important. They have to research on some artists and um, some designers, um, etc. So um, that is important. 
Uh, also, they have to write a written essay on the second year. I always forget to say that. So I'm saying that now. So they have to write a written essay, which is around 1,000 words in two years. Time is not a lot. Basically, we're talking about three A4 pages. Um, so this is possible for uh, all students, including international students. Because obviously, we're quite lucky that the MPW is kind of in the center. So we're really close to galleries, such in gallery, museums like VA, uh, Nat Natural History Museum. So we take students to visit uh, to various museums and galleries. And we encourage, we strongly, strongly encourage students to go by themselves as well. The more galleries, the more inspiration, the better coursework and portfolio they will have. The same, by the way, applies for all the subjects, not just art, <clears throat> for, all, for all art subjects. And of course, arts and design is suitable for students who want to study fine art, architecture, really, really important, or any other creative course, basically. Um, I hope that's uh, clear. Please let me know if you have any questions either now or later on. So the next, that's the art room in quite clean and nice um, environment. Usually, you know, the scene here is full of paints and artwork and stuff, but that's, um, and we're lucky because we have one of the biggest room actually in the college and that's, um, that's really, really good. So textiles is another subject that a lot of students are choosing and that's because they their students that they want to do fashion textiles or any 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 subject in clothing industry basically we're we're offering textiles for a level and gcse and we have two um, expertise two tutors specialists on textiles the same hours they have six hours four practical and two sketchbook research and of course they're expected to use various equipment like um, sewing machines and printing and and using wax, fabric dyeing, and as the more materials, the better. Now, a lot of students they ask this question, but what if we don't know how to use these machines or you know uh, to stitching or doing all these um, textiles kind of um, skills? That is not a problem because, as you understand, the first term, let's say, or the first two months. Uh, when you start, the teachers are showing you step by step how to use all these uh, techniques and all these materials. So you don't need to worry a lot about that. Yeah, all we need is students that they have passion, real passion for textiles or art or any other subject that they're choosing. If you have the passion and the talent, we can help you to develop your skills and, and succeed and get results. So, of course, again, visit to museums and galleries. We encourage students and we do that. And as I said before, textiles usually is for students that they want to do fashion or textiles in universities. As you understand, we will come back to that a little bit later, but as you understand, a lot of students, they choose textiles, not actually a lot, all of them that they choose textiles in MPW, but in other colleges as well. They aim to go to Central St. Martins, University of the Arts London, uh, and that is a good thing. Obviously, that you know they need to aim for the best colleges and the best universities. But as you understand, they have 5,000 candidates. They end up with 5,000 candidates, and not everyone could go there. We will talk about the university offers a little bit later. So, this is a textiles room. Again, quite big room and um, ready for students to um, use all these um, materials. The third subject, it's uh, 3D design. Again, we offer it only for A-level. Sometimes, I mean, this year, having said that this year, we offer it for GCSE because we had three students really, really interested. So we offer that, but depending on how many students we have from GCSE. Now, again, we have three, uh, two 3D specialists and there they do silk, monoprinting, 3D, clay, plaster, carpet, wood, any material. And of course, we're quite lucky because we have a kiln that we're for firing the clay pieces and it's quite big. Um, this subject is, is really good. Some students, they take it as, um, as, a, as a separate A level. Um, but all the art students, all the, the ones that they take art and design, they have two hours per week and spend time to create things as well. Because as I said before, it's really important to develop some skills there. Students that they aim for architecture or jewellery design, 
or any other 3D creative course, it's 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 a it's a somehow it's a really important subject. Yeah, because I mean, last year we had like uh, three, four students that they they apply for architecture and they were doing art A level plus 3D design A level. And then they had maths, physics, etc. So that is good because they they have the chance to create a lot of 3D models, whether it's architecture or any any abstract piece. It's good because they can add this on their portfolio. Anything extra is a bonus, basically. This is the um, uh, ceramics room. This is students' work, as you can see. And then the fourth subject is graphic communication. Um, a lot of students they ask this question: What is graphic communication? Basically, this is a final piece from a student that you see with the Coca-Cola. And um, basically, you have the chance to communicate to viewers and people that they see your work through Photoshop, graphic, computer, etc. I mean, you can paint on the poster if you want, if you have those skills. But the majority of the students that they choose graphic communication are students that they're really good in um, Photoshop and they want to develop skills there. And maybe they're not that good in painting or drawing. So as you can see this poster, for example, it says stop crushing the environment. Uh, what the student did, just to give you an idea, he literally took this um, uh, Coca-Cola tin, he, he crushed it and he took a picture of a field with nice um, um, flowers. He photoshopped that on the tin and he tried to show this idea of crushing the environment is not good, environmental issues, etc. So it's through these posters, basically digital posters, digital art that you, you express your feelings, emotions, etc. Now uh, we have two tutors there as well. And I think it's a good idea, and we, the student, our students are really lucky actually that they share two or three sometimes tutors because, the, as you understand, the more tutors, the more expertise, the more ideas. I mean, I teach art, that's my subject, and um, I, I sometimes give like two, three artists to a student to work for this week, but then sometimes, as you understand, because it's art, maybe the student doesn't like the third uh, artist. This is where Luis is coming, the other art teacher, and maybe she can introduce some other artists there. So we go faster and the students have the chance to choose from the ideas if they're stuck. Yeah, so students are expected to use various techniques such as Photoshop, typography, poster making, etc. Now, Again, this kind of question, what if I don't have any Photoshop skills or any digital kind of skills there? That again is not a problem because especially if you're going to take it, um, if a student is going to take it for two years, because the first two months um, we literally, what we do, we just go through all these Photoshop techniques, step by step, how to do this, how to do that, etc. Also for students that they still struggling with Photoshop. We have um, uh, master classes. We have like um, surgeries every week, sometimes one um, once per week, sometimes twice, depending on the need of the students for the whole year. And students uh, are allowed to attend those and ask questions one to one with um, the tutors. Uh, so as I said, if you if you like this idea, you can try if you're a student um, and we, we're here to help you basically. And of course, this subject is suitable for students who want to study in general design and advertising, web design, um, etc. This um, this subject, graphic communication and 3D design, um, this subject, they're not, uh, I, I, I must say, they're not as, as, as popular as art and design, textiles and photography. So in a way, it's a good, it's a, it's a good thing and it's a benefit for students that they choose 3D design and um, and graphics because for I, just to have an idea, graphic communication last year, we had um, students that they were doing exams the second year for A level. We had um, nine students the year before we had seven for graph for 3D design. We had four students. When it comes to art, we had 31 students and textiles that we had 17 and photography 18. So again, I'm, I'm talking about the whole group, but um, the whole um, cohort, but in the classrooms, as you probably know, the maximum we can have is eight. 
Now, if you have like in graphic communication or 3D design, if you have four students and two teachers, that's a big thing. So literally, if you struggle how to enlarge, for example, this Coca-Cola team, you can literally during the lesson, you can say to the teacher, Alan, can you please come and show me how, which button can I, how can I do this and whatever? So the teacher can come there and help you uh, how to do that. So that's, that's quite a bonus there. And of course, photography is the fifth subject we're offering. We're offering that for A-level and GCC, quite popular subject. I must admit from my experience in MPW, this is my seventh year actually as a head of department. And when we interview students during August, etc., I must say that I'm a little bit disappointed for some students from some students because they say, oh, um, I, I can't draw, I can't paint. Uh, you know what? I, I'm good in uh, taking photos, selfies from my phone. Let me let me take photography. I wish, and I'm honest with you, I wish uh, that um, it, will, it, it would be that easy, but it's not. Photography is, is more than just taking selfies from your phone. However, you can use your phone, obviously, but you need to research. You need to, you have a lot of things to do there, like every other A-level art subject. OK, so we have two tutors again. They have practical skills and they're expected to use various digital equipment. Like obviously they need to have their own camera because we take them out to take photo shoots and uh, photographs, but they expected to take some photos by themselves as well. So they need to have a camera. Again, if you don't know, as I said, to, uh, for graphics, if you don't know how to use Photoshop or even if you don't know how to use your 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 kind of DVL camera, a more professional camera, again, we can show you, okay? The beginning of the year, that's what we do. Obviously, the teachers are there to help you um, with editing, developing, and of course, a dark room. We're really, really lucky because not a lot of colleges, especially in London, they have dark room, yeah? So this is our dark room there. So students, they develop their own photographs in the college, not just digitally. Like, um, like every other college, every other student is doing. It's a bonus also for their portfolio for those students that they do photography because universities now, and I know that because when we invite them for lectures in the college, they always, they're so impressed when they see our darkroom and they always expect and they want to see and they're really happy when they see um, uh, photographs developed in darkrooms. Obviously, uh, we have this facility there. We do visit galleries and museums. We take students out for photo shoots around the college. And of course, photography is suitable for students who want to study um, various forms of photography, working in um, publishing, media, um, reportage, fashion, etc. Now, these are the five subjects we're offering. Again, students that they're really serious and they want to go to, the, they're aiming to the best universities, like University of the Arts London, for example, or any other university, some some of them they take two art subjects. We they combine, for example, we do have students that they take art and photography. We have and they create amazing portfolios. We have students that they take textiles and art. That's a good combination. Or 3D design and art. This is a good combination for um, architecture. Having um, um, sorry, saying about architecture, talking about architecture, you all need to remember that. Um, for example, if you apply to UAL, University of the Arts London, even Central St. Martins, for example, some courses they need three A-levels, some other courses they need two for BA. For foundation, for foundation in Chelsea or Camberwell, etc., they only need one A-level. Of course, plus a strong portfolio. Okay. When it comes to architecture, they need three A-levels, not four. The best colleges, the best universities in the world, they don't ask for four, they ask for three A-levels maximum. And one of them has to be uh, academic subject. You can go with three art subjects to do architecture. They can accept you, but you can go easily. And actually it's a good thing if you go with three art subjects for art and design, textiles, etc. That means more passion and your portfolio will be much, much better. Yeah, so um, these are the five the, the five subjects we're offering. Please um, unmute and ask any questions if you have, or again, as I said, you can ask me later. Um, okay, 
I guess I can continue. Now, A-level portfolio preparation course. Now, um, it, it has been a, 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 a miscommunication with um, in the past with this course. Basically, I, and that's why I prepared this slide. I want to clarify what this course is about. Basically, like uh, we started two years ago, we had a lot of students that, um, especially international students, um, that um, because of visa, they had to have 18 hours on their, on their timetable. That 18 hours means three A-levels. So they were taking art, for example, textiles and business or English or whatever. But, however, because they had to have six, six, six hours. Now, the problem was they didn't really need to take the third academic subject like business, and they wasted their time there because all they wanted those students is to go to Central St. Martins, for example. So basically they were happy with art and textiles or art and photography plus a strong portfolio. So we discussed this with John, the principal, and, and I said to him, why don't we, instead of offering, instead of giving them six hours business, which they don't really need uh, when it comes to art courses in UAL, for example, uh, why don't we offer these six hours instead to do portfolio and prepare the portfolio? Because as you understand, the portfolio is the most, as I said before, is the most important thing when it comes to application uh, process and of plus with the interview. But when you go for interview, they don't know. I mean, we can predict you. We can say, Tom, for example, will get an A star. But you know what? We always predict good grades, obviously, because if I say our student will get a C or a D, most probably they will not accept him. So we always push this kind of between us. We always push a little bit the, the predicted grades, like every college, every university, because potentially the students will get that. But when they go for interview in January, in the middle of the year, they don't have um, results yet. All they have is a portfolio. And if the portfolio is really, really strong, they will off they give you a place there. They, not only for foundation, they will offer you a BA as well, which I will, I will clarify and, uh, and give you some facts about that um, towards the end of the presentation. So, um, John, um, thank God he agreed with that, and um, we we went through that. So basically now we have students that they're really dedicated to go to an art college. So they come here, they take two or three um, subjects, like art subjects, plus these four to six hours, depending on the needs of the portfolio course. So basically they do this parallel to their A-levels. Now I need to clarify, you don't get a, a, a certificate A-level because that's not... Um, uh, an A-level subject, but it's really, really important um, to students. Now, we're offering this to one-year students, though, yeah? Please remember that. We don't offer that course to two years, because if you do two years, let's be honest, you have two years, and it's far more enough time to prepare your portfolio in two years. So you don't need this extra time. But when it comes to one year, is too much already the A-level coursework, let alone to have to create parallel um, a portfolio. So this is for these students. And of course, here you can see those are um, five different pages of students' portfolio. Now, for those that they 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 they, they don't know what um, how the portfolio works, etc. As I said, it's really important. It's the most important thing. And usually, you create 20 to 30 pages, like A2 pages separate from your sketchbooks and the A-level course that you've done. And you present that when you go for interview. So it's separate papers um, and posters you create for um, the examiners. So live drawing, really, really happy we have that. We're offering this to any student that is interested. And usually we have it Tuesday uh, after school. So we have it from 6 to 8. The reason we have it after school is because anyone can attend and basically we have a, a live uh, model there uh, and students are, um, are allowed to attend that for two hours and they develop their skills in drawing. If you apply for architecture, for example, if you apply for art uh, courses, any art course or fashion, you expected to show some drawing skills. And the better drawing skills you have, the more developed, the better chances is to go to Central St. Martins, University of the Arts, London, etc. These are um, pieces from live drawing, 
we had this person we had these people um posing and uh, they, they drew them there like drawing and of course we added those on their portfolio <clears throat> then <clears throat> something that we're really really um, proud and we're quite lucky as well is the lectures and the workshops we we have in mpw from visiting artists and universities you can see for example mark mousen is this photographer here this is the poster that we created um, two years ago <clears throat> And Mark Mousson is one of the most famous photographers, British photographers. And uh, just to give you a clue, um, is the one that uh, when it was Jubilee anniversary of Queen Elizabeth, um, he he was the only photographer, the only artist that projected his work. Basically, he was doing this um, kind of water liquid, um, um, like uh, with soap, etc. This beautiful, colorful work, uh, animation, of course, 3D. He projected his work on Buckingham Palace. So, and then we had him in our college two years ago. He talked. I, I, I enjoyed that lecture a lot. I learned a lot from him as well. And the students were inspired. So not only we, we bring photographers, we bring people from the fashion, generally in art and design. And we also have uh, every year, we have Ken Walker, is head of fashion in U UAL, University of the Arts London. And he's giving some pre-interviews um, and uh, he's training our students as well, what they expect to see on the interviews, etc. cetera. Um, we have Makiba and Georgia from UAL, Central St. Martins, they come every year except this year that it was obviously due to COVID, we had it online. Um, but uh, hopefully next year, fingers crossed, they will, you know, everything will go back to normal and they will come back in life. And they, of course, face to face and they see students work. They give them some feedback on their coursework, their portfolios, etc. So we have really, really strong relationship with, especially with the uh, University of the Arts London. Uh, so those are posters from um, when we advertise that. <clears throat> the next few pages, I will go a little bit um, quickly, is uh, I chose examples of students' work. It's just basically between us, it's just to show off a little bit, just to have an idea <laughs> what our students are, uh, are doing. And those are from different um, subjects. So this, for example, is from the 3D design. And this is the one I was telling you. Students are not expected to do only clay. They can use different materials. I don't know if you have a clue what this is. If you can guess, this is sponge, like literally the yellow sponge that usually they use in the bath. And they put resin on, they made it really hard and uh, they paint it green. And those are uh, like little needles that they put there. Obviously they paint them gold and they just created this beautiful jewelry kind of sculptural stuff. Now, these, these are like stones now, like sculptures, individual sculptures but when when this student apply for jewelry we literally we stuck this with blue tack on on her earrings on sorry on her ears and we turn them into earrings so in a way this is what they want to see they want to see how your how you can take something and and may turn it into a jewelry or turn it into fashion etc so examiners really really like um, her work obviously this is from textiles Again, they use different materials. This student, for example, it, she used metal to make this corset. A lot of different ideas. This is burn fabric to make this beautiful kind of inspired from China uh, corset. These are sketchbooks, preparation for um, 3D design plaster sculptures inspired by the human body. More sculpture, more um, drawings. This is from Natural History Museum, which is literally five minutes walk from uh, from MPW. And this is what the students uh, literally drew um, in their sketchbooks in one lesson. This is another student, one of the best students I had actually in the last five years um, in drawing, especially. This is this is a big drawing that she done um, with charcoal and uh, graphite pencil. And um, she she's now studying in um, in California animation because as you understand to study animation you have to be exceptionally good in drawing because you design this and then you animate them. This is her piece. That's a that's a really big A2 um, um, drawing, graphite pencil on paper. This is Ting Huan Chen, Arna. 
These are from 3D design sculptures um, that uh, students done. I will talk a little bit about this sculpture a little bit later because uh, this student won a prize, a really, really, really nice um, prize. Uh, we'll talk to, I will talk to you about this later on. This is out of paper. Again, this is an art student. Photography. Students not just taking photographs, kind of flat, boring, old fashioned photographs. They try to turn the photographs into a sculpture, into something more and more interesting. Again, this is uh, photography students. They change and they take photos and they sculptures and they make a lot of interesting things. This is an art student inspired. This is inspired by refugees. And of course, you can see she created this tower and burn out of cardboard, the brown cardboard, but she paint, she burn to make this kind of interesting sculpture. The same student inspired by refugees. She, she is an art student, but she created 3D pieces as well. You can see the chains, the slavery and all these um, ideas behind uh, what she wanted to say. And of course, the screaming, the anger, etc. This, I repeat, her final, these are her final pieces. Um, and the reason I show always this is just to just to just to confirm that our students, they're not expecting only to do drawings and paintings for final pieces. They can paint on clay. They can they can just paint and spray on plaster, etc. Yeah, but we have students that they like the traditional way of painting. This is a massive, it's an A1 um, more than a meter long um, painting. Uh, of um, a, a student that is doing architecture actually now in university. Self-portraits and portraits in general, we train students to do that. 3D pieces again. Students are they, this is uh, uh, architecture students that they, they, they doing architecture now and of course we help them to create these models. Those are not that big, but they look really big with the photograph actually. And of course, these are photographs from um, the portfolio uh, of that student. Architecture students again. This is Natural History Museum. Uh, and literally the students sat down and drew all this on A4 paper. And this one, like a um, kind of um, extreme landscape there, cityscape, I would say. And these are pieces that she hung with fishing wire and she took photos. These are again from uh, portfolios. Now, these are, these are made out of wood, all of them out of wood, painted white. Again, models for, from architecture. What else we do every year, except the last two years, unfortunately, because of COVID. But <clears throat> back in 2019, um, and of course, the years before, we plan a really, really big art exhibition, an art show in the college and we bring people in, it's really, really um, successful. We prepare posters and we invite, we invite people, universities, etc. And it's an opportunity for us to show um, to people, parents, friends, everyone, what our students are doing. This is Arna's drawing, by the way. This is graphite pencil. It's a big, big life-size um, eagle drawing. Look at the feathers, for example, how amazing done. Um, so we show, and you're more than welcome, by the way, um, to do that. Usually is the first Friday of June or the last Friday of May. That's where we usually have our show. And um, hopefully this year, as I said, we're going to um, go back and do that again. You can see here how packed, and this is the reason why we we haven't done it for the last two years for obvious reasons. Um, these are two um, art teachers there. So we exhibit students artwork, sketchbooks, a lot of kind of um, work um, around. So these are students and this is Emilia, the textiles teacher. And this is John, our principal. The, and I forgot to say that every year we call uh, we invite um, 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 David Dave Webster. This is David Webster. He's an academic dean 
of um, uh, international students for from UAL, University of Dallas, London, and he's been coming to the college the last seven years. I'm, I'm here. He, he's accepting our invitation. He's he's going through. He looks at um, our students' work, and he's giving the award of the best art student, which obviously we we decide all together. And this is a picture of um, um, Anna's work that she. Um, she was a winner on that year, two, uh, three, sorry, three years ago. Um, so this is photographs from from the show. You can see that we have three D pieces as well, and paintings, drawings, etc. Quite busy. Students and teachers there. Now, I'm not going to read all this. But um, that shows how good we're doing with awards and prizes, by the way. We started back in 2016, 15, 16, and we, I, I discovered this um, competition of Sachin Gallery. Uh, and obviously, who doesn't know Sachin Gallery? It's one of the most prestigious galleries in the whole world. And uh, they have an exhibition. And we enter students, obviously, thousands of students are allowed to enter. And in 2016, and Brenda, uh, won the first prize with her a textiles piece, and she had the chance to display her her work in in such a gallery for two weeks during summer. And as you understand, it's a really really big thing. I mean, I was jealous between us because I was her teacher, and I, I didn't have the chance to uh, display my work there. And I don't think I will have the chance because you have to be really successful and popular artists to go there. But um, there you go, Brenda and other students that I can go through a little bit later, they had the chance to display their work through this art uh, competition for students. So we had Arna, Daniela and Yufe, they, they got certificates. And as you understand, it's really good for their CV. When they go for interview, they can say that I display my work in such a gallery. I mean, that is a big thing. In 2017, we had Ben Jocelyn won the second prize with this piece here. And um, and of course, 100 pounds in vouchers and blah, blah. And he displayed his piece as well in such a gallery. And um, I forgot to say that um, the first three, the, f the first three students, they display their work. So Brenda came first. And um, in 2016, in 2017, um, Ben came second. And 2017, Henry Lloyd Horton, this student here, and Jean Lin won, which is this student here. They won as well. And another competition that we tend to um, um, participate is the National Schools Art Competition. And we're talking about national in the whole country. Yeah, so Scarlett Reeve Tucker, which is this student here, she done this beautiful 3D piece. She won the London and then nationally with that piece. Eleanor Brown, the first prize in painting in London. Kat Ray with her sketchbooks. Holly Ramsey, the first prize with this textiles piece. And of course, in 2019, Nikon won the first prize in such a gallery. And as you understand, that was the last year because then we had COVID and everything just postponed and paused, basically. So this is Gillian Guo, Brenda, Ben Jocelyn with his pieces, and Nikon, that's the piece that uh, you've seen before, and he won the first prize. He displayed this um, sculpture in such a gallery uh, back in 2019. For two, three weeks, it was displayed there. It's a big honor for our students, actually, to display their work there. Now, uh, I think this is the last slide. Um, and I left it the last one again because for us it's really important and I think for everyone that is interested to come to MBW is, let's be honest, it's one of the first things they want to know. What's your results? How are you doing? How bad are you doing better or, you know, what's happening? And of course, the university offers here because that's the reason that the students are coming to MBW, not only to develop skills and learn things, but to get a good place to the ideal uh, university or college they want to go. So as you can see here, this is the A level, and this is for GCC. In 2018, we got 40%, which is quite high, A star to A as a department A level, 76 A star to B, and 97 A star to C. In 2019, we got 38% A star to A. It was a little bit down, but as you can see, 
89 of our students, which is a really, really high percentage, um, they got A star to B, and 99, almost everyone, got um, A star to C. And then in 2020, last year, they got A to A star to A 58. More than half of our students, as you understand, they got um, A star to A. 95, almost all our students, they got A star to B and 100% A start to see. Hopefully, hopefully we continue like that, if not better. In GCC, the same thing. We ended up uh, in 2020 results. We got 73% A start to A, which is obviously with numbers now. It's not um, um, letters anymore. And, um, and then 100% A start to B, which is good. And hopefully we will continue like that. Now, the reason we get these good results is not only because we have really, really good teachers, it's because we advise students what subjects they will get. So, for example, when they come for interviews in August or even now, if they interested, we go through their portfolios if they have any artwork in the past and we advise what is the best for students and what when it comes to universities or, or offers, etc. So if I see a student, that, for example, that is not really good in drawing, but he's really somehow I can sense and I can see that there is some talent in 3D. I, I strongly advise a student to go for 3D design because this is an A-level art subject as well. And that's why the students that get better results, they get better portfolio and they go to where they want to go. Um, and talking about places in universities, as you can see here in the bottom, these are the universities offers like the comparison from 2015. As you can see, if I talk about the 2021, which is the year that this year that we just finished, we had 25 applicants for art universities in the whole department. And then the total number of BAs, they were 20. 20 out of 25, they got BA places. And five, they got foundation. Now, the reason I focus on this one is because, as you understand, if you go now to UAL, for example, University of the Arts London websites, you will see that they always say the entry requirements. They need two A-levels, they need three A-levels, whatever, but they need, they prefer to have from BA, they prefer to have students that they already done foundation. I'm sure you, you, some of you, you already know that. So they don't tend to give places to BA straight to BA to students from A-levels because they don't think they're ready for that. Having said that, having said that, this year, as you can see, they 20 of our students they got BA offers. The reason because when they when they did interview, of course, online this year, and when they show their portfolio. This, the, the universities realize that these students are ready for BA, so they don't have to waste their time for foundation. Now, some of them in these BA offers, some of them, I think five or six of them, they got a um, conditional offer from BA as soon as they do a nine to 11 weeks summer foundation. I, I'm not sure if you know that. It's a kind of new, it's like two years, the UAL especially, they created that. If a student is really talented, and how do they know that? From their portfolio. But for some reason, either the language, especially if they're international students, or because they, they feel that they're not ready to go for that BA course, they offer them BA, but with a, with a condition that they will stay during summer for nine weeks to 11 basically in London, and they train, they go through some techniques and some stuff, they train them, and then in September, after summer, they go, they start BA, which is a really big thing, actually, and a really good thing, because they don't have to waste the whole year and then apply again. Now, I'm sure you, you're interested for international, the number of international students, out of 25 this year, 13, more than half, um, uh, they got um, their international students and of course number of students to UAL because let's be honest this is where everyone wants to go in the art department and um, 18 of them out of 25 72 percent they got places to UAL 14 out of 18 is for BA and four for foundation because they wanted to do foundation now before I finish I need to remind everyone that <coughs> And this is what we advise our students. Um, 
they cannot. I know, as I said before, everyone wants to go to Central St. Martins, but what we advise students is to apply to, because through UCAS, as you know, they have five options. So I strongly advise students to apply for five different universities and they can apply for foundation as well, not just BA, because what if for some reason they go for interview and something goes wrong there and they don't get the place from BA? At least they have a backup plan. They, everyone has to have a backup plan because especially international students that they have visa, if they don't get the BA offer, then they have to go back to their countries. They can't really stay here. So a foundation course is one year, is one year, sorry. And why not? It's, you know, it, they prepare them, you're more ready to go for uh, BA. Of course, this is what all our students done. These 20 students that they got BA, they apply for foundation as well, but because they got offers from BA, they rejected foundation and they went and they went for BA. That's what happened. And um, I finish my presentation. I hope um, uh, I hope I didn't go really quickly and rush things. Um, but please let me know if you have any questions or any 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 questions you have related to the presentation or any question or any subject, etc. please um, uh, let me know. You can ask. Let me check the chat if there are any. Um, no questions from me. Uh, looks amazing, thank you. Um, again, if you, as I said um, in the previous session, uh, I did. If you have any, if you think of any questions or if you have any any uh, requests, just, just you can email Jason or um, MPW in general or myself and ask, and we uh, like um, email us and we can uh, respond back to you. Um, Jason? Hi there. Hi. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for a, for, a, for a lovely session, Greg. Thank you. That was interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. Thank you. I hope um, just to let everyone know, we uh, obviously recorded this session and we'll make that link available uh, later today. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I, I, I hope they, they have a more, a better idea what, what we're offering and, you know, you know, MPW arts in general. But if they have specific questions about, you know, for example, uh, I'm interested on this and what's happening to this course and what subjects, then again, they can email us and we can go back to, we can respond to them as soon as we can. Okay. Okay, no questions, I guess. Okay, then. Uh, okay, was thank you so much then for attending this session, everyone. And um, looking forward to meet some of you soon or answer any future questions then. Thank you, Jason, for organizing that, by the way. No problem. Thanks, Greg. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 -bye.